Hi, um, I'm Annabelle Gray, and I'm a senior product designer on the code review team. And today I'm going to talk about kind of two different things. I'm going to walk through this presentation I created. It's, um, it's a merge request navigation and user flow synthesis that I completed last month. And then I'm going to talk about how this related to onboarding onto code review and kind of the, the pros and cons of going through something like this as um as an onboarding exercise but also as an actual um, work item to be completed so walking through this presentation um what we did here was um, i looked at several years actually of older research that's been conducted regarding merge requests and um, how users interact with them and it, it it encompassed different things it was um videos and um just issues and uh, it, it was internal users, external users, some of, them, some of it was papers that were written about just merge requests in, in general. And anyway, it was, it was a lot of things that um, I looked through to kind of compile this. And the top takeaways that I came out with were that these were the two hypotheses that I was actually focusing on. The merge request UI is overwhelming and the page locks focus that was definitely the case. It, it can be difficult to parse and it feels crowded there is too much information presented, but despite all of that information, it can still be difficult to get a quick overview of the merge request. And that information and actions <clears throat> are scattered and it can be unclear what users should actually be looking for. And then the second hypothesis is that user flow changes depending on the role, and that can be the author or the reviewer and where that user is within the entire review cycle. Um, so from, from merge request creation all the way through to the actual merge. For that one, um, that was also validated, but the there wasn't enough to really flesh it out. So I'm actually in the middle of conducting more targeted research about the entire merge request journey. So the recommendations in order were that first one was we need to do more research on the entire journey um, from both the perspective of the author and the reviewer to really understand what people are looking at at different points of time, what information is used the most, what's not used, and um, hopefully that would theoretically inform the rest of the recommendations below, which it definitely is doing. I'm, I'm halfway through it and, it and it's really interesting so far. So the second one was reorganize the metadata to emphasize what users value and use the most. And that links to, I'm not gonna open it, but um, this links to a slide deck that I believe Anna put together that um, encompasses issues, ethics, and merge requests, metadata, and then everything is ranked by what users value the most and, and the least. Um, so that will hopefully help us as well. Um, the third one is move the merge request widgets to a consistent location to increase their findability and usage. This one's definitely important too, but merge request widgets in general, I feel like it, it's a bigger issue. So yes, they need to be more consistent, but also um, I've seen mixed usage and some are definitely used more than others. Um, I feel like the most, the ones that are used the most are usually the merge widget, the pipelines and the approvals. And then the rest of it is a little bit more up in the air about who's using what. And again, this was only, um, the research I'm doing now is only internal users. So just because our users aren't looking at certain widgets doesn't mean that nobody is. And to help understand more about that, we're adding telemetry data to all those widgets so that we can find out who's using what and how much. And we're adding tracking to like every piece of the widgets. Um, fourth is redesign comments and activity to highlight relevant items and use chronological reading. I'm gonna go into that one later because it's it's a long one. And then five is research the currently fixed UI elements to remove this behavior. This one is very near and dear to my heart because I'm always advocating for less fixed elements. It's I'm trying to remove my internal bias, but I'm really not a fan of them. Um, it didn't come up that much, but the um, the fact that users consistently said that the UI was cluttered and hard to read, and there's not much space to do the actual review portion of it. So um, we're going to look into if we can remove some fixed elements and hopefully kind of clear the page a bit and make it a little bit more, a little bit easier to parse. Um, so going into some of the details, um, this is relating to the overview. And this is a quote from a user that I came across 
the overview, especially in the merger class, is overloaded with information and you can't distinguish between important and not important. Um, so this is an example of an open merge request I found, I think, last month. So when you look at it, you don't know how many lines have been changed right away. You don't know if it's been reviewed yet. You don't know if the pipeline passed, unless you look at the, uh, the tab. Um, you don't know if it's been approved yet. And you're not sure if really all this metadata is useful. It probably isn't. Um, and then when it comes to the uh, discussions, threads can break the chronology of events, making it difficult to see what has occurred since previously viewing the merge request. And this is an example of a really long merge request I found. And um, that's, I mean, it, that's not a good example actually, but um, I'll look at some of the details. You can't see the resolved discussions without um, expanding them. If they've, if they've been resolved, then they're collapsed and you can't see without um, opening every single one of them. And then somewhat important as well is that they're all kind of styled the same. So in this example, you can see threads were started on old versions of the diff. And then at the top, this is on a current diff. If you're a reviewer, it's really important to know if the code is um, up to date or not. So you might not want to expand the ones that are on old versions versus the, uh, the current code. But as a reviewer coming into this, they're all, they're all collapsed and you don't know really what's, what's happened. Um, because we allow threading of comments, the chronology is, can be all over the place. So in this example, this is like the first comment on an issue or a merge request, sorry. And um, you can see that there's a comment that appeared after the merge, but it's actually at the top of the page. So it's really hard to tell where everything is. Um, equal weight and styling of the activity makes it difficult to see more important actions. For example, just looking at this, when was it merged? Um, if you go all the way to the bottom, you might think it would appear there, but no, it was just mentioned. And then you can keep looking and reading. And then finally, all the way up here, you see that it was merged. And this is an important action that we should probably highlight a little bit better. Moving on to the changes tab, um, code review UI is hard to get to show enough of the files to see the code logic. This makes code reviews for larger changes difficult. And this kind of ties into, at least partly, the, um, the fixed elements that are all around the page. So. <clears throat> this is an example merge request. And when you scroll, you can see this is really the worst case scenario, but it is on a 16 inch MacBook Pro screen. And you can see that only these portions are scrolling and we have fixed elements up top, both sides. And then if you're looking at inline or sorry, side by side mode, you you everything's wrapping and it's it's just it's very um, it's kind of claustrophobic. So um, that's why people frequently will leave GitLab. Well, one of the reasons you might leave GitLab and open it up in your editor. Um, a couple considerations to take into account uh, that users frequently mention information overload and they're seeing way too much. But at the same time, those same users would frequently say they can't find what they're looking for quickly enough. So um, when thinking about redesigns, it's gonna be important to balance there's too much information and also I need to find this information right away. And I think that that kind of ties in with the metadata thing. What, what do users want to see right away when they land on that page and what is less important and can be possibly uh, moved around a bit. And then I've got further reading here. You can look at the whatever links you feel like looking at. So that, um, that's the synthesis that I did for my onboarding issue for the first milestone that I was in code review. And um, I was gonna just talk a little bit about the good parts and the bad parts of that. So um, the good part about doing something like this for onboarding was that I was able to get such a, a great overview of all the research that, well, not all of it, but a good amount of the research that's been done throughout the years on the on the merge request page. And it, it just gave me a really good overview because even though I've been at GitLab for almost six years, I didn't know that we had done all this research. Um, and it also helped me just kind of figure out where we are and what we're gonna work on next. So part of the reason that we did this too was to help us kind of inform our next steps, um, uh, our next steps within code review UX because as I'm sure many of you know it's it's a more mature category so it's not like we're adding 
feature after feature, like other groups have been, we're trying to make it even more lovable. I think it's already at the lovable stage. So what we're doing now is trying to make it even better. And um, I, that's kind of where the negative part, I guess, comes into here, because when I was looking at all this research and making this presentation, I was just thinking that I, this is things that everyone already knows, I think. And I, I felt weird putting together a presentation and being tasked with what are we going to do next when it kind of felt like everyone already knew um, what we were going to do next. And every time I had a, an idea coming into code review, like my first few weeks, I had all these ideas and I was like, let's open issues. And I think I did almost every single one. Kai or Pedro was like, yeah, we already have an issue for this or it's already being worked on. And so I was just like, okay, um, I feel like I felt like I wasn't making as much of an impact as I was hoping to. And I think a lot of that stemmed from, I'm getting really like uh, self-reflective here, but I think I put maybe a little too much pressure on myself to know everything about code review just because I used to be on the front end team and I've been here for so long, like I should know everything and I should be able to make an impact right away. And that was um, not the case. I mean, I hope it's going to be the case soon, but um, yeah, it's a long process. I don't know where I'm going with this. I just thought it would be interesting to talk about. So um, to summarize, I think doing something like this is such a great idea for onboarding, um, learning everything that we've done and helping to shape where we're going is, is really helpful not having a specific deliverable and maybe putting too much pressure on yourself is not good so um yeah that's the pros and cons but that's all i've got right now are there any questions thank you annabelle for the presentation we have uh two minutes left so austin do you want to voice your read only item maybe anyone else wants has a question for annabelle Right. I'll make a comment. I'll say <laughs> this is such an incredibly important part of our experience, and it's so important to our business. I'm so pleased to see you focused on this. Thank you, Annabelle. This was great. It was informative for me. Um, I'll actually probably go back and watch the recording again because I think it's that important. So thank you. Sure. Yeah, that was awesome. I just wanted to say um, that I took the same approach when I moved over from static analysis to threat insights of like going over what do we already know, like going over all of the research findings and um, just making sure that I'm caught up on um, like what are the known pain points? Do we have issues open for all of those? I too also found myself wanting to like contribute right away to like show value or something. And I just had a chat with my PM yesterday about like, I, I like don't love how I, how that manifested in some ways. Like, I feel like I jumped the gun a little bit on, on some things because I wanted to like prove myself rather than stepping back and being like, okay, wait, is this a feature that we really need? It's kind of like when you join a new company and you just want to like show everybody like they made a good hire. Um, I thought it was interesting. I was being self-reflective too. And just thinking like, what am I doing? Like, that's not <laughs> how I usually work or how I should work. Um, so I had a chat with him yesterday about that. Like, but anyways, I, so I appreciate, um, your vulnerability there. And just, I, I think it's great to start um, with reviewing research. I think that's a really great place to, to start off. Um, I had a, a thought um, and a conversation yesterday actually about like category maturity and SUS scores. And if there should be like a relationship between the two, I don't think we have time to get into that now, um, but maybe that's something to discuss async. I don't know if those things should be tied at all. Um, but good job taking this on because this is um, obviously a huge, hugely important part of the product and um, a lot of um, a lot of considerations to make in different workflows and personas. And it's it's a big it's a big one. So good job. Yeah, definitely. Thank and now 
Oh, what is my comment? No one knows everything. If there's one thing I realized also after three years in this company, no one is able to understand how the, the whole product works. So I also appreciate uh, your vulnerability and transparency in it all. Really awesome. I'll stop recording, so stay on time. <laughs>